Let's see just how easy to use customizable and configurable talent performance is for performance reviews. Here we've got an employee, Gemma Jones, and we have some summary information about her here, and you can choose which information you wish to collect. In terms of the performance appraisal process, there's also the ability to include values or behaviours. So this is a self and a manager rating against a questionnaire that you can specify. In addition to that, we have a section for objectives. These are performance-based objectives, things that Gemma has signed up to achieve this year. There is also a career tab where she can specify her future aspirations or mobility in terms of other locations she wishes to work or other parts of the organisation, even other roles she's interested in. There's also a section for development activities, so this is her continuing professional development. If we take a look at any one of these, we can see that for each one, there is a learning log, and we can expand that and look in a bit more detail at things like success measures, why she's doing it, start date, and all of these types of things. So it's a fully developed professional development system. Also, we have other tools, such as My Journal. This is where Gemma can create a log, a record of activity recording anything specific that might relate to her role. This would be useful, for example, if she received an email from a customer, she could cut and paste that into here. Those categories are ones that you choose and specify for yourself. For those organisations that use a competency-based evidence section, you can also construct this particular section, which looks at the competencies required for the role that she performs. And it provides an opportunity for Gemma to write some evidence, and for her manager to write some evidence, and for her manager, and optionally her, to provide a rating. There is also the facility for an interim review, so you can capture some performance-related information at some midpoint of the year. And then finally, there's the obligatory sign-off section, which contains all of the progress information related to how Gemma's done. So her manager would look at her objectives and maybe her manager's manager might say something and sign it off. Or you can look at the continued professional development activity. You can see where she's got to there. Or you can maybe sign off the interim review. So with talent performance, you can choose which of these different elements and tabs are included in a performance appraisal process. You can choose the competencies or behaviours or activities that are to be used in this particular review programme. It's highly configurable and easily accessible. And that's talent performance. Let's see how Talent Successor can help you transform your succession planning activities. Here we have a screen showing talent pools. Talent pools are used by Talent Successor to manage individuals for particular objectives. If we just jump into this one, around director level potentials, the individuals here are expected to be developed to a particular level, as defined by this role profile. Here we can see some summary information about them, together with the overall match they have against profile, with their skill CV, which has been verified by their manager, whether they have any development activities, and so forth. We can look at Anna in a bit more detail. We can jump into her skills profile, and here we can see that, against her competencies required by the role, she has some at some levels, these will be indicated by green or amber, but she also has some gaps there, indicated by the red markers. We can also see here that, for Anna, there's a very specific development activity, which I can click on, which is designed to fulfil that specific gap. If we move back, we can always put these folks into a talent grid. This is a traditional nine-box grid. And you can colour code all of these as you wish. Another of the things you can do with Talent Successor is look for people with specific skills or with a particular capability. If we look for somebody who wants to work in Chile, we can find a number of employees who want to work in Chile. What I can also do is look for some individuals who have Spanish-speaking skills in their CV, and here I can see that I've got Anna Jackson.
So with Talent Successor, you can do some skills management, skills searching, you can create talent pools designed to succeed a particular individual or vacancy or job role, and you can also see people's skills gaps and plan their particular development thereafter. And that's Talent Successor, transforming your succession planning. Let's see just how quick and easy it is to align the objectives of your employees with the objectives of your organisation. Here we see the organisation's key objectives. Let's work on the sales objective. We can see that it is intended for the sales division and also anyone can align their own objectives with this one. To cascade it down to anyone in sales that doesn't have this objective, we simply press cascade and it instantly shows who is missing this important objective. I'll cascade it to everyone here. Now everyone has this key organisational objective. However, what's really important is what each employee then chooses to do to make their contribution. Let's pretend to be one of those we cascaded this objective to. We'll search for Sarah in sales and see her objectives. There is the cascaded objective. Now it's her turn, perhaps with her manager, to decide what she is going to do. Let's update the objective with something that she can contribute in this area. For Sarah, her objective could be deliver £15 million of revenue before year end. Now we can see that Sarah has an aligned objective. Others in the team would follow the same process. Once employees start aligning objectives, we want to be able to report, in an instant, how they are all progressing and how many employees have objectives aligned with this one. Here's one we've made earlier relating to employee engagement. Cascaded and aligned objectives in two minutes. How easy is that? Providing feedback using Talent360 really couldn't be simpler. Once logged into the system, you see the customizable introduction page containing any guidance you want to provide to reviewers and a link to any further information about the 360, the assessment or the program itself. This helps you ally any fears about anonymity on how the feedback is going to be used or shared. Across the top of the screen, we can see the competencies used in this assessment and also the number of mandatory questions still yet to complete. I can see who I am providing feedback on, together with a photo, if they've uploaded one. It is also showing that I am a peer of this person and the title of the review programme that this feedback is being gathered for. So, going into the first competence here shows me the questions that I should respond to. I can also open the scale if I need to. The little red star here shows the mandatory questions in this assessment. You can also choose to add free text questions, really, wherever you wish. The data on the screen is saved as you go, and so there is no need to complete the assessment in one go. Moving on, in this example, we have a competence with a six-point scale and an example of a completed free text response. If you roll over the scale point heading, the system will show you what each scale point means, or, alternatively, hovering over the radio button itself will tell you. In this example, we see a three-point scale which might be more suitable for just the manager and self to complete, perhaps in a performance appraisal context. So, it's possible to mix performance ratings and behaviour ratings safely in one assessment, if you wish. A different approach to conventional Likert-type scales is shown here with behaviourally anchored rating scales, or bars. In this example, the reviewer simply chooses the closest phrase that matches their view of the person. The final page of this assessment contains only free text questions. Often this is used for supporting or supplementary purposes such as summary opinions or general feedback. Once the reviewer has completed, they press the Save button and the software automatically checks that all mandatory questions have responses, and if so, the data is committed as final and complete. And then, once all feedback has been provided, you get to choose what goes into the final reports from all these great graphics and analytic insights. With Talent360, you have both the simplicity and power to make a real difference with your 360-degree review programme.
Introducing a new performance management system can seem to be a daunting task. It needn't be if you have the right tools to support you. As a performance cycle is worked through over time, we ask people, employees and managers to do different things. For example, to set objectives, to carry out an interim review, to review development and so on. Sometimes sending email reminders just doesn't work. But imagine if you could stick a post-it note on everyone's screen that encourages them to do the things you need them to do. It's about supporting efforts to engage people with performance management. Let me show you. Here we can see Karen's screen after she's logged in. Imagine that it's the beginning of the year and you want everyone to set some objectives and maybe a development goal. This post-it note appears and you, as the administrator of the system, control what's on this list, what each item is called, the ordering and the message displayed when each item is checked off. So we can see that Karen needs to set an objective and here she clicks on the link that takes her to the screen to do so. She would have seen that there are other things on the post-it too, so she can get it back here. It's important that this mechanism isn't intrusive and is found to be useful to people. If it kept coming back on screen to force her choices, then it stops being helpful and becomes directive, and that'll turn people off. If folks don't want to see this automatically, then they can hide it. The analytics we put at your disposal will tell you if people are actually doing what you ask. So, imagine we are later in the year and many people have hidden the post-it, but now you want them to conduct an interim review. Well, you can make the post-it reappear for everyone with new guidance on next steps. Note that the title of the tab has changed to Reviewing Performance Mid-Year. Here we see that Karen should review her development goals and conduct interim reviews. How you use this to support the introduction and ongoing smooth running of performance management is up to you, and it's good to know it's there. This is just one example of how our software tools are designed to engage people rather than simply capture data and fill in forms. Talent performance. Simple. Engaging. Effective.